Hello everyone, my name is Justin Rogers and today you're watching History by a High Schooler. Um, sorry I haven't uploaded in so long, I've been having a lot of technical issues, but I think I, can, I have a system now that works really well. So right now you guys are seeing my screen, I don't know if you see me yet, I'll have to look back on the recording. But I decided we're going to, since I've been gone for so long and I, I don't, I'm not really in a position to make my own content, why not react? To other people's content. Um, I've never watched 10 minutes of history though I have seen my fair share of uh, history channels and we'll see how it goes. It's 10 minutes of history World War II in 10 minutes clearly. Uh, I know a little bit about World War II. I'm, I'd say I'm pretty knowledgeable but you're gonna get a high schooler's take on this so let's get into it shall we? Oh and I'm calling this series by the way before we get into it um, I'm calling this series One Takes because I'm not doing any editing. I'm just, this is me. This is who I am. And let's just start it, huh? Put full screen for you guys. I will be pausing the video throughout, so be prepared for that. 1929, the Great Depression varied across nations. You know, I don't know if this buffering thing is going to be a it real It started start. with the collapse of the American stock market and quickly spread to Europe, then worldwide. Yeah, the Great Depression was definitely a leading cause of World War II. Uh, you know, Germany, that is one of Hitler's, like, reasons Hitler rose to power so quickly is because... It created a severe worldwide... Sorry about that. It's because Germany, after losing World War One, went to a serious Great Depression, um, and you know, with the harsh rules of the Treaty of Versailles, it's no wonder why they went into such a I don't know Great Depression. <laughs> Classic. All right, let's get into it. Wide economic collapse. In a lot of countries, the civilians started to be against government and capitalists. Then, they turned to support extremism, asked to redivision colonies to get more resources to solve the national crisis. After World War I, although Italy was in the winning ally, Oh man, are we having an ad already? Allies, they weren't satisfied and felt like they were being scammed with what they received in the Treaty of Versailles. Benito, Benito Mussolini, Mussolini was, was the founder, founder of the fascist, fascist in Italy and, and received a lot of support from the military. military. He then became, became the prime minister and formed the oh, first fascist, fascist government in Europe. I'm sorry about the buffering, guys. Uh, school Wi-Fi is not, you know, great. After that, there was Germany in the defeated side. Germany had to pay a huge amount of war fee, hence they had to print a lot of cash to pay off their debt. The inflation rate was highly. Never <laughs> that this it, that, that never works. Every cut. Look at Venezuela right now. That it, printing more money doesn't necessarily mean, uh, you know, you're making more money. Just tosses those inflation numbers up, which they'll talk about right here. For all those that want to print money, I don't. I don't know. I, I don't judge what what career you get into. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry about the buffering. The increase. At, this At this time, time Adolf, Adolf Hitler became, became the national. Ten minutes his savior. He used his speech talent to spread his ambition and rise the national pride of the Germans. In 1933, Hitler became prime minister, took control, and formed the second fascist government in Europe. In Japan, the Great Depression destroyed the whole country's economy because Japan Fun fact, Japan was on the winning side of World War One, and not many people do know that, but they're actually in the picture of Treaty for Versailles. Well, hold on. I'll go check. Um, and if I say Versailles wrong, I'm sorry. Taking so long. Yeah, sorry, everybody. 
Someone in the comments should just count how many times I say sorry. And maybe we'll get like a... Whoever counts it the right gets a prize. I don't know what, because I'm a broke high school kid. Where are they? I know they're somewhere in here. Pretty sure it's on this side. Anyways, yeah, they were there. So, your fun fact of the day. Full screen. Japan was seriously shorted of important industrial material. They declared war to get resources from the other colonies in Asia. At that time, most of the colonies in Asia belonged to Great Britain, France, America, and Netherlands. Hence, Japan needed more allies. They came to find Germany and Italy for help. The three countries had a lot of things in common and all considered themselves as master races and, most importantly, they had a lot of which brings up the question of like what happens if they did win World War II and it was just those three they it just end up fighting again since they all think they were superior to each other not not the best relationship in my opinion of enemies in common the allies of Germany Italy and Japan were formed called the Axis powers with the intention of taking over the world in 1931, taking advantage of the warlord era in China, Japan started a full-scale invasion to Manzhou, invaded this area and created a puppet state called Manchukuo. In 1937, Japan enlarged the invasion further. See, in 1937, a lot of historians debate like if this was actually the start of World War II or if it was when uh, Hitler invaded Belgium or when... Hitler and then Russia, you know, hurt Poland pretty bad. Uh, but yeah, those are all points of topics of when World War II actually started. And yeah, I think it started right here because this is just the first of what would soon come, at least on the Pacific front. All right, let's get back into it now. Into China mainland. With the speed attack strategy, Japan quickly took over Beijing, Shanghai, and Nanjing, the capital, with a bloody massacre. The Chinese commander, Chiang Kai-shek, moved to the capital, Chongqing, and held on there. He tried to ally with the leader of the other Chinese warlords to carry the resistance against Japanese. Back to Europe, Hitler broke the Treaty of Versailles and started to rebuild Germany's military. However, the Allies seemed not to care much about it. In 1938, the Germans invaded Austria and Czechoslovakia without any struggles. After that, Hitler wanted to take his army up to Northern Europe. Because he didn't want to face the Soviet Union, he made an agreement with Stalin, and they agreed that they would both invade Poland. Uh, this agreement was called the Non-Aggression Pact, I'm pretty sure. Um, I'm sure he's going to talk about it uh, right here. And... Yeah, it's just they agreed not to attack each other, which Hitler broke later on, which proved to be a really bad move, bad business decision on Hitler's part. The Allies of Germany and Russia was formed. In September of 1939, the German forces and Russian forces both attacked Poland. At that time, England and France both declared war with Germany. Although, the Polish army resiliently fought on both fronts, they couldn't stand the overwhelming strength of the two neighbors, and ended up being invaded. Right after that, Russia invaded Finland, the Germans invaded Denmark and Norway, the Britain-France allies sent reinforcement but was completely defeated. The full-scale strategy Hitler was using similar to German strategy in World War I, head to the west, take over France, and then defeat Britain from there. After that, the Germans would turn back to the east. See, in both World War One and World War Two, like they basically had the same strategy, like this this guy said. But because uh, they, since Gen Germany is so like cent central in Europe, um, you guys can't see my hand where I'm touching. Um, since they're so central in Europe, they can be attacked by both sides, which proved to be their downfall in World War Two. 
World War One, I, I wouldn't say as much because Russia was in the midst of a revolution at the time, so I don't. But then again, I would have to read up on it again. All right, back to the the ten minute video turn into twenty with this buffering and my talking. East defeat, defeat Russia, Russia to win, to win the, the whole war. war. To achieve that purpose, the German forces attacked Belgium, trying to pass over the French defense system. The Allied also very quickly sent reinforcement. It was like the previous World War I repeating itself. But this time, Hitler had a new strategy. In the south, tanks. Strategies, tanks. The French had revealed a minor weak point because they didn't think that the Germans would go into a small, narrow jungle. So, 50 German divisions quickly crossed the jungle and trapped the Allied reinforcements in. The German forces surrounded them from every corner, destroyed the most well-trained French army. The last group... A lot of that has to do with, like, innovation. Like, the French army was still using World War I era um, tactics and equipment. Like, a lot of their units haven't switched over to tanks and modern vehicles a lot of their people were still cavalry so that explains why they got destroyed by germany this early in the war group of the british forces luckily survived by escaping by the sea taking advantage of the wind the german forces took over paris and invaded the whole of france hitler finally did what they couldn't do in world war one he created a new puppet state in france and france became germany's new puppet this move helped Germany to easily take control of the French colonies in Africa without sending their forces there. Hitler now started making a plan to invade Britain. To be able to land in Britain, the Germans needed to win the war in the air. The German Air Force attacked London, but was stopped by the Royal Air Force and lost a lot of fighter planes. The Britain invasion now had to be delayed, but sometimes the cities in Britain still got attacked by the German forces. Back to the Italian fascists, this war happened mostly in Africa. In August 1940, the Italians successfully took over Somalia, a British colony. After that, they targeted Egypt and Greece. The British then sent reinforcements to Greece, and that made Hitler worried, and started to focus more on the southern front, and make or threaten other small countries to join the... See, the thing I have about the Italians in World War II, I don't... I'm going to be honest with you guys, I don't know much about them. I just know that they weren't as competent as their other two allies because they had a lot of internal struggle because uh, Mussolini uh, was uh, a little crazy, a little crazy at times, and a lot of his guys didn't enjoy that. <laughs> and I feel like a lot of Italians just didn't want to fight this war at all, unlike the other two where they had such nationalistic ideas and a very charismatic leader. And now. Yep. Um <laughs> any day. We'll In the fascist side. side. The, the Germans, Germans invaded, invaded Yugoslavia, and, together, and together with the Italians, Italians won the battle in Greece. Greece. On the 22nd of June, 1941, the Germans and their allies sent over three million troops to the Soviet Union and started the biggest land invasion in history. The Germans strongly attacked and used a very effective sieging strategy, destroyed and captured millions of Soviet Union's troops, pushed the Soviet Union further into the mainland. It would be the end if the Germans could take over Moscow. Suddenly, the weather became cold. Under the brutal cold, the advantage was now in the Soviet Union's hand. It wasn't only that it was super cold, uh, it was also that the Russian plan basically since Napoleon was retreat and they burned their crops so no, nothing left to the enemy burn everything and it was their plan and since Russia is so expansive they could do that forever almost until winter and with the brutal winters most units are um, what's the word equipped with uh, the face that kind of weather hands. The Russians started the counterattack, pushed the German forces back. The Germans now had no choice but to wait until the winter ended. 
In Asia, Japan tried to enlarge their Manchukuo land by invading the Soviet Union and Mongolia. Unfortunately, they were quickly stopped and had to cancel the northern invasion. Their situation in China also got stuck since the allies of the Chiang Kai-shek, the warlords and communist party, drastically fought back. In September of 1940, the Japanese tried to cut the communication between the Chinese and the West by taking over the French colonies in Indochina. To justify their invasion, Japan created the Greater East Asia Co-Prosperity Sphere, announced to help the Yellow Race defeat the White Power. At that time, the U.S. was neutral, but still against the fascist invasion. The Americans put an embargo of oil and steel on Japan. This, this really hurt Japan, and that, you know, they show it in Pearl Harbor. But Japan is not, they don't have a lot of raw materials or resources on that, that island right there. So that's why they're expanding east um, and getting everything they can is because they don't have enough uh, resources to fuel their war effort, which definitely becomes a problem later on. In return, the Japanese started a sneak attack on the American Pearl Harbor and caused huge damage for American Navy force in the Pacific Ocean. Taking that advantage, Japan started their full-scale enlarging war to kick the West out of Southeast Asia. All the colonies in Southeast Asia are now under the Japanese brutal domination. In Europe, the Germans built hundreds of contention camps to keep and execute the prisoners, political criminals, even gay and disabled people. The most famous one was the Jews' massacre with the number of victims over 11 million. Right after the winter ended, Hitler carried on with his plan to invade the Soviet Union, focused on getting close to the south of Soviet to get the oil. The most important battle then happened in Stalingrad. That place was called the Hell on Earth. The soldiers had to... I don't know if this guy will touch on it, but uh, the Russians, like, call their oil and stuff on fire, which greatly hurt the, the Germans' war effort on the Eastern Front. The FYI. Best to survive. The battle lasted a constant 200 days. The victory belonged to the Soviet Red Army. The German 6th Army there were surrendered and completely defeated. The Soviet Army now took advantage and started a full-scale counterattack. At this time, the U.S. joined the war. The U.S. Army came to Africa together with the British in Egypt and kicked out the fascists out of Africa. On the Pacific Ocean, the midway battle between the American and the Japanese was also the turning point with the victory for the U.S. The Japanese army was humiliatingly defeated, put an end for the Japanese full-scale invasion. Yeah, the thing is, like, the reason why we, uh, we won midway is because when Pearl Harbor happened, uh, they didn't really attack our fuel tanks or nothing. So a lot of the ships we got, we repaired and just refueled and send them back out on their way. So, uh, definitely a mistake on Japan's part. After the Italians ran away from Africa, the Allied now planned to land in Sicily to take over Italy. A lot of Italian-American soldiers were called to join this campaign. Also, a lot of people in Sicily... ...we had relatives living in America. So when the Americans arrived, they were warmly welcomed by the locals. With the mafia involved, the Italians started against the war. Mussolini started losing the support from the civilians. He was kicked out of the fascist council, and his power was also taken away. The Italian government then had a secret deal with the Allies to surrender. Sorry about that, guys. That was my uh, PE teacher and basketball coach, Mr. Fulfer. Featuring, huh? <laughs> I'll put that in the title. To stop it, the Germans suddenly sent 16 divisions to Italy to take over. After discussions, the Allied decided to open another front to distract the Germans in Italy and Soviet Union. Millions of Allied troops gathered in Britain, prepared for the biggest invasion ever in history. 
On the 6th of June, 1944, the Allies started the invasion of Normandy Beach. This was the biggest invasion from the sea to the land in history. This bloody battle caused a huge number of casualties for both Allied and the Fascist. After a month of drastically fighting, the Allied got the advantage and kicked the Germans out of the military bases there. It was a stepping stone for the Allied to emancipate France. At the same time, the allies of American, British, and Chinese started to push the Japanese out of Myanmar. The U.S. started two strategic battles on the Pacific Ocean to take over the Philippines. And on Yeah, what the U.S. would later do is what's called island hopping and just boom. Like I said, you can't see when I point, but look at the islands on your screen. They just island hop and they take one over, getting closer and closer to Japan's main island. Which I think is pretty cool, but definitely really bloody since Japan. And on the uh, other hand, to get control of some small islands, getting closer to Japan mainland. Back to Europe, the Allied non-stop headed to the east. They got to Belgium and tried to emancipate the Netherlands. Although the Allied winning speed was quicker than his plan, Hitler refused to admit his loss. He decided to start a counterattack to make the tables turn. He gathered the very last piece of German forces and resources to cross Arden Forest, tried to have an attempt to trap the Allied forces in one more time. After a long fight, the Allied got their advantage and pushed the German forces back. Not able to make up for their loss, the German forces had no hope. Hitler's mental and physical health went down quickly. The Allied then attacked Germany from both sides, and the Soviet quickly took over Berlin. The German fascist. Yeah, when the Russians came in, oh, that was good thing we uh, they were part of the Allies and we won. But a lot of war crimes were committed that day. Uh, it was it was pretty bad. That's the thing about history, though, is it's written by the winners, and you can see that throughout all of it. Go as far back as you want to. Just collapsed. The dream was no more. There was no hope. Hitler committed suicide in his secret bunker. Two out of three fascists were collapsed. There was only one left. The Americans took over Iwo Jima and started attacking Okinawa, the last island between them and Japan mainland. The Japanese forces fought to the death, but still lost the island within two months. Now, the Allied had two choices. They could either send troops to Japan mainland and facing a possibly huge number of casualties or make Japan surrender right away. In July 1945. Another thing about a reason why we, uh, the Americans went with the atomic bomb is because, well, it doesn't show it right here, and I'm pointing again, but Russia at the top of your screen was coming in from the north down to Japan, and that could have been why uh, we decided to go with um, the nuke because we didn't want to split Japan like we were going to do with Germany uh, But historians also use this as a point of argument saying we didn't have to use the atomic weapons because When Russia pushes in Japan was gonna most likely surrender because Russia is pretty brutal especially with Stalin He got He got got a lot of Russians died in World War two The U.S. successfully invented the nuclear bomb, and it could be used any time. Britain and France realized that the Soviet Union was still keeping their army in the captured bases. They started to worry and decided to forewarn the Soviets. A nuclear bomb was dropped on Hiroshima, and then another one was dropped on Nagasaki. On the 13th of August, the Emperor Hirohito surrendered and put an end to World War II. Within six years of the war, at least 60 million people died and made World War II the bloodiest war in human history. The U.S. and the Soviet Union became the new two super countries of the world. Due to different ideologies, the conflict between them started and a new war started. Yep, and that is a topic for a different day. I covered the Korean War earlier, but we could still do the Cold War, but Cold War is just so long. Um, I hope you guys enjoy this new style of, you know, just videos. It is one take, so I won't be able to do any editing and so all the awkward parts like 
with Mr. Full for coming in. I can't really help, but it's the best I can put out right now with the equipment I have. Um, sorry for all the filler words, too, but shame. One more thing I wanted to tell you guys was that, sorry about the lighting, that I will be doing this, and I'll be putting a lot more videos out. It's just until I can get better equipment, this is probably the format we're going to go with. And also, this channel is not uh, me telling you stuff. It's a learning channel for both of us. That's my favorite part about history, is that no matter how much I learn, I never know enough. So I know if people out there uh, in the world watching this video, if you see any historical inaccuracies or you're just, you know something, let me know down in the comments. I'm happy to read them anytime. Uh, but that's the video for today. Uh, I don't I don't have anything else planned and I expect a video for Tuesday and Wednesday Thursday I have a track meet so I won't be uploading that day and yeah let me go out stop it it's been a fun ride see you history nerds later peace out